Okay, so there's the uh, the new intro to the video. Oh, by the way, my name's Harold. Uh, you just saw the new intro to the video. If it's the first time you ever watched, uh, you don't know it's new. But uh, anyway, uh, I'd like for you guys to give me some feedback on whether you like this better than the previous one. Uh, what's wrong with this one? What's wrong with the last one? And whatever. And uh, also, I'm going to be casting this uh, aluminum in a 4x4 four four, uh, piece of tubing, 4 inch by 4 inch. And at the bottom of it, I figured maybe I'd plug that up with uh, some plaster, pour about an inch of plaster in the bottom of it to to contain the metal. And then I'll set it on a piece of metal so the plaster doesn't get shoved out by the metal. And uh, you can uh, voice your opinion on what you think uh, about that. Uh, also on this trip with the motorcycle that I was telling you about in the last video on the Titan 500, I had, uh, it wasn't a big enough, really a big enough motorcycle to be taking long trips anyway. We did about, uh, I guess about 6,000 miles in, in 10 days. And so that was quite a lot of moving on. Of course, we, we might have been going fast sometimes. Um, but what we did is we went up to uh, Yellowstone and stayed in a little lodge up there at Yellowstone. And uh, when we got through, we took off over over the Continental Divide, going down toward Jackson Hole in Wyoming there. And it was already snowing on the Continental Divide there, right right there in the first of August, you know, which uh, I called a, a South Texas boy off guard too. But anyway, every day before we would go anywhere, this was pre GPS, you know, we had a map, we'd sit down and, and figure out the road numbers, which ones we were going to take, and it was the boss lady's job as navigator to keep an eye on the road signs and tell me, go go this way or go that way or take this other road, and uh, so anyway, we're, we're going downhill into, towards Jackson's Hole, Wyoming, and it was getting nicer and warmer all the time, you know, and uh, way down there where it was really nice and comfortable I come to a spot there where the road made a Y and so I asked her right or left and she didn't say nothing and uh, I yell at her right or left she still doesn't say nothing and I'm starting to run out of time I'm going to have to make a decision one way or the other after about the third time yelling at her right or left I just took the left and I hadn't got probably a couple hundred yards down there and I realized this can't be the right road Yes, the number don't doesn't fit my memory, so I saw a gravel spot over the other side, and I slowed down, pulled over, stopped on the gravel, and uh, put my foot down on the on on the uh, gravel there on the ground, fixing to you know pop the kickstand out, and my foot was just started to roll inside, we sliding, and and the motorcycle was too top heavy anyway. And the more my foot slid, the more I was leaning over and over and over. And I started yelling at her, get off, you know, get off. I'm trying to lighten the load there. And she doesn't say nothing. And finally, I lose control of the whole thing and we just fall over sideways there. Well, she come up there kind of mad, had her pants torn and stuff. Turns out she was asleep on the back of that motorcycle. So I, every time I turned around on this trip, I got in trouble. She wanted to know just what did I do wrong to cause us to crash like that. And I told her, I said, I just stopped here on this gravel. And I said, and if you'd have got off, I could have held the thing up, I think. You know, but that probably she took that as some kind of a bad thing, too. But anyway, we, we got down to Jackson Hole and we replaced the broken signal light and replaced the torn pants and that sort of thing. And uh, so. I don't know if she's going to ever take another trip like that with me again. Probably not. But anyway, let's get on with making the next piece of this. I had to had to go down to the local steel supply and uh, buy myself a, a nice ring. And uh, I passed by the liquor store. And I was dressed a whole lot better this time, but I didn't go in there. I thought, well, maybe I'd wait a couple more months, you know. And uh, anyway, so uneventful trip down to the steel supply and, and we're going with making a, a piece here to turn the uh, 
the crucible over and pour it into the into the mold. One of the uh, big problems to project is picking this guy up after it comes out of the furnace. I've got tongs to pick it up out of the furnace and set it down, and I, I did have a little piece for rolling the, the, uh, the crucible over and uh, pouring the aluminum, but I lost it. I looked all over the place, but the guys down at Steel Supply fixed me up with a ring here right off a piece of 7 inch pipe and it comes up and it holds on to the, to the bottom of the crucible which I finally figured out what that was what I had before with a piece of uh, 7 inch pipe about that wide and ragged looking and a little bit dirty and I got a piece of black, black iron pipe and I don't know thing to go on the end of it to hold the ring. Got it all for 12 bucks, and that was better than my, my first plan. I thought I'd get a piece of flat metal and buy a, a ring roller down at Harbor Freight and roll me a new ring. And then it, you know, it kind of come to me that obviously I had a piece of pipe before. And so if I had one, maybe I could find one. Sure enough, they had all kinds of these little boogers in the shelves. That steel supply is a, is a great place to go for a guy that wants to build a wrought iron fence or anything. They get some really fancy wrought iron stuff. They got little flowers with all the petals and everything. They got leaves. They got, well, I don't know, you name it, they got it to design your fence with. I don't really want a wrought iron fence, but I always get tempted every time I go in there and think, whoa, maybe I ought to build a wrought iron fence. That's just one of those things. Am I going to do it? I'm going to thread the, put some threads in here so I can screw this on there. And I'm probably going to raise it a little bit too, but I'll start off with putting some screws in there. Otherwise, the little blur just slips in the chuck. I'm getting in too big a hurry here. having to switch belts. started and all I'm going to do is do this twice so we'll spare you having to watch it
probably three layers in just a matter of seconds anyway. Well, I'll probably make the end of it a little bit U-shape. I'm gonna weld it on. I'm gonna weld it on there in a T-shape. So then we'll start on the grinder with that next. It's not really gonna fit inside of here. It's, uh, but it'll have the general, the general shape of a, of a square. So we'll just keep right on like that. getting the boss to come out here she found my new welding goggles definitely can't do without them so we're going to try to uh, do something about this I don't know if I got enough rock for that if I don't I've got some Rieger steel rod I'd rather brace the stuff oh it's nasty I'm not sure if you can make out that that's water out there, but we're in the midst of intermittent thunderstorms and the whole yard back there is full of water. And I don't think it's going to get necessarily any better most of the week. Got uh, four inches of rain yesterday and uh, 2.3 so far today. It let up for a little bit here. Well, I determined that crummy or not, as long as I made that piece there, I can I can set the uh, crucible down in here and I can pick it up and turn it. The only piece I need is just a little latch here to keep the to keep the crucible from wanting to fall out of it. It's a little top heavy when I put it in there. I had previously made a, a piece like this but uh, it got lost and uh, I, I told the wife I'm not doing worth a darn welding this thing and it, it looks like a dirt dauber's nest and she said well if it, does it stick and I said yeah and she said well that's all it takes and she was right so naturally this is where we're going to stop right here to uh, wait for the rain to quit so I can go outside and do the, the casting at the end of every video, I always ask you to subscribe. And what the, the deal is with the subscribing is, if you subscribe, it sort of sets in motion the gears that I can uh, let you know when I've got another video up. And it tells me that you, you might have liked it enough to come back and see something again. Now, if you do subscribe and you click on that subscribe button, you'll notice right beside it there's a little gear. And right there, I've circled it with red. And you need to click that little gear because YouTube doesn't automatically notify you just because you subscribed. You need to tell YouTube that you want uh, you want them to notify you every time I upload something new. And then you'll get a little email and they'll tell you, hey, he's put something new up there. And uh, always ask for comments. And comments are the very best way for me to find out if I'm doing anything right. The like button is nice and all like that, but uh, 
you could have clicked the like button and I don't know what you liked about it you know but if you say uh, I liked this or I didn't like that well that kind of steers me in some direction besides I like hearing from people anyway so if you're not a subscriber subscribe please and uh, if you got something to say go ahead and say it I'm I'm always happy to hear it y'all come back now